So hi, I am Ivan, and I am reinventing WebGL maps, which is kind of a big thing to do, I guess. Uh, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of me. Uh, I have been a long timer. I'm a long timer in uh, in FOSS and FOSS4G and OpenStreetMap. I became a little maintainer. I started doing some WebGL things, and then on uh, four years ago, I kind of burnt out because of things that I was asked, and uh, I also, because uh, I implemented a WebGL leaflet plugin, a set of WebGL leaflet plugins, I tried to implement the same thing in open layers, and I failed miserably. So that kind of hit me a bit, and uh, that's why I sort of started doing this. Uh, I, have, I have been seeing a lot of, uh, I know about uh, the JavaScript state of the art when it, becomes, when it comes to map viewers. I know most of this. I have at least checked the documentation for them. I have attended the talks on how they work internally. I have strong opinions on each of them. Uh, in Livlet, we have reached completely the limits of what HTML can do. We have squeezed every inch of features that can port, that, we, that a browser has that we can use on a map. Most of the rest, um, either I haven't really checked them in, uh, in depth, or I cannot understand their architecture. This is horrible. I don't think that open source software can really be open source if you cannot open it up and see how it works. And this is the case, especially with Mapbox.gl and Mapliver.gl. I don't know what a bucket is. I want to know what a bucket is in Mapliver, and I don't know it. And it takes a lot of time to learn how it works. I don't want to learn CSUM. And DeckGL, I don't want to use it because apparently it needs a back on the background, so it's not really a map rendering library, it's a map data visualization library on top, which also uses some data structures that I don't particularly like. Uh, we have a couple of bugs in Livlet that also appear from time to time. And as I said, we cannot fix them in Livlet. It's no, there's no way to fix this in HTML, so this is why people go to other libraries. I hate WebGL. Profoundly, it's not WebGL, it's OpenGL for JavaScript. I hate it. You cannot debug it, you cannot set a breakpoint. You don't have record structures in JavaScript, so the thing that works perfectly for OpenGL, which is a C struct, you don't have in JavaScript. So you have to become, you have to create these complicated data structures and data workflows to make it work. And floating point precision, I hate absolutely. So I want like a unicorn in the sky. I want to do something that doesn't use the word layer, more on this later. I want something with the leaflet API because everybody loves the leaflet API and being able to extend it. I want to handle projections as open layers does because that's lovely. I want to do the performance that MapLibre has because that's lovely. And I want to not burn out while doing this, so more on that later. I hate layers. I absolutely hate layers. Depending on who you ask and what you're doing, a layer is something different. And I can, I can, and I have layered the layer for layer for layer for layer for layer for layer for layer. So I will not ever, ever use the word layer. I started by renaming everything and by creating my concepts from scratch. I don't have layers. I have symbols. I have cartographic symbols, not features. Symbols. A feature might be more than one symbol. Each kind of symbol is going, is going to be drawn in acetate. The acetate is going to handle the WebGL data structures. And once I have all the acetates, I will flatten them all together in a platina. What's a platina? A platina is a glass surface of a photocopier or this old timey um, slide projector. I'm old enough to have seen this in university in my classes. So, okay, you can call me old, it's fine. but. That's the concepts I'm going to use. I render things on different acetates, and when I'm doing the composition, it's being done in a platina. That also has some implications on how the map state is handled. So one of my design goals was to make an API which looks like leaflet. And this is minimal. This is how it should look like. I don't have to, wor to worry about uh, the latitude-longitude thing, because it's implicit in the coordinate array. I am doing some fancy things such as the, uh, the span instead of the scale. I am running away from zoom level. I don't use the term zoom level whatsoever. And when it comes to tile layers, I want to have some same defaults for the default or the de facto standard or mer of the Mercator uh, tile pyramid. So this is nice because it looks like leaflet, so people should like things that look like leaflet or don't 
go, uh, don't go away very much from what Leaflet likes. Uh, also, I am a old guy who likes object-oriented programming. I depend on making UML diagrams for my code. It helped me a lot, and it helps me to check that what I'm doing has a sane architecture. So I'm doing this, I'm encapsulating WebGL shaders in the acetates, and I'm deduplicating as much code as possible. I don't like other WebGL uh, frameworks that do duplication of some names internally, so I'm, I have worked uh, hard to abstract that and to hide that complexity. Uh, an insanely cool thing that I have been doing with Gleo is symbol inheritance. In the same way that one can do a leaflet plugin to take a leaflet layer and create a different, more complex, or more restricted leaflet layer, I can take a symbol and extend it, or I can take an acetate, extend it, and create it in rendering, which is absolutely awesome. This has a, bit, uh, a small counter, uh, counterpart or uh, downside, a small downside, which is a very high coupling between the symbols and the acetates. My computer science teachers would kill me for making something with this kind of, of coupling, but it cannot be avoided, unfortunately. The way this works is that a symbol is a JavaScript object that is agnostic from, web G, uh, from the GPU memory. An acetate handles all the, all the GPU memory. This way I can instantiate a symbol, get it out of the map, get it in a different map, attach some events, get it out of the map again, attach some more events, and then attach it to a different map, and it will work. Also, because it's object-oriented, all symbols are DOM event targets. Since we are now in 2022, uh, we can have some browser-wide, uh, some event handlers, I mean, event targets that work in all browsers, which is nice. This is more than JavaScript, but for a thing that is not usually uh, targeted with more than JavaScript, so to speak. So I can have a sprite, which is the equivalent of a marker, and attach click events and pointer events, and it works out of the box. It's nice. It's so cool. Uh, now, uh, since uh, we have some problems with the live demos at this event because of how the slides are handled, if you are on Venueless, and if you have your laptop ready, you can check that URL and go into your laptop and check how this works. This is a small example, and you can check the source code because it's really readable for this example. I'm creating a few markers, the one for Madrid, Trondheim, and Buenos Aires. I'm attaching some events, some click and pointer events to it, and then I'm spawning, I don't know if it's uh, 10,000 uh, uh, sprites, and each of those 10,000 sprites has an event handler attached to it. And it's absolutely wonderful. When you're doing JavaScript and try to do this thing, it, I haven't seen a clean way of doing it with other libraries. You have to do some kind of a generic event handler for all the symbols of the same kind and then filter, etc. In With this way, I can just pick out some of my symbols and attach specific event handlers to them, which is nice and I like it. Uh, those demos, you can just, uh, I have been leaving this for a minute. I hope you have taken note of it and are trying it out. Uh, one of the other things that I work very hard is to get rid of the need of uh, Web Mercator. Gleo is agnostic when it comes to coordinate systems. So whenever you are going to do a symbol, you need to provide that symbol with a geometry. This is a geometry more like, uh, very like, very much like the simple geometries OGC spe specification. These are the points, lines, and, and polygons, and so on. But you can, uh, you can have uh, some shorthands because, hey, this is uh, object in programming. I can, um, I can subclass some kind of geometry and, and do a, uh, something specific. If you don't provide uh, a standard, it will. If you don't provide a uh, CRS, it will take some default that you can also configure. Uh, one of the big problems when you are dealing with geometries and zeros is the uh, anti-meridian. I am handling this by not assuming that a geometry will be fitting within the bounds of what you believe that the CRS. Uh, in, G in Glio, geometries can hang out. If you need to um, forget that logic and provide the fast path, you can do that. But uh, usually what you will want to do is provide these things and let Glio do all the, all the messing around. So for example, if we have some geometry that is going to wrap from 170 
longitude to one uh, to minus 170 longitude, glio internally will wrap that geometry around and change that from 170 to 190. And then that geometry will be drawn twice, once with a zero offset and one with a minus 36 offset or whatever offset it needs to be done, etc., etc. This works. It's magic. It's kind of out of the ordinary or out of what we are used to doing GIS, but it works for rendering. So I can change the entire CRS of the entire map. Uh, this is the leveraging Proch, the Proch library, which all love. We all love. Uh, and that's how I can just define uh, a new projection and make the map use that projection. Uh, Glio will use a scale in CRS units per pixel. So whenever you're using this uh, coordinate system, you can think of, quote, meters, quote, per pixel. That's the scale factor I'm using here. So if you have your laptop ready and you are checking the demos, you will be checking this insanely cool demo, which is changing the entire map projection on the fly with several different, more or less common projections. This is absolutely cool. It takes like half a second to reproject everything and redraw it. Uh, since I'm doing some magic with the WebGL data structures, what I'm doing is uh, for every symbol, I will have a coordinate attribute, but the rest of the data for that symbol will not get changed if, it, if it's not needed. So this is providing the least amount of updates to the WebGL data structures needed for this. You don't need to change the color of a polygon whenever you are reprojecting that polygon. So I don't do it, that's it. Do check this demo because it's absolutely nice to, if you have worked with uh, projections before in web maps, you will love how this works. Now, I made this slide mainly for Luis de Sousa, who is going to, is there, and is going to give a lightning talk on this subject. Uh, since I am doing a web map, I realized that I need a bit more data about the projection than just the name or just the proj string. I need some way to know how it tessellates. Does it tessellate horizontally, like the default web marketer? Does it tessellate vertical, like traverse marketer? Does it tessellate the all the way? Does it tessellate triangularly, maybe? Also, I need some data to be able to uh, operate with the OGC APIs, because there's no uh, one standard way of referring to a coordinate system whenever you're dealing with OGC services, and fortunately, there's no automatical way of doing this cleanly. And if you have worked ever with WMS 1.3, you know why I have a flip access option there, unfortunately. Also, something that is missing from the coordinate system definitions is some informative values for the user experience. If I don't provide these values, I will allow users to just zoom all the way out and lose control of what they were looking at. And uh, it, you can also zoom in all the way to the mi micrometer scale and the user will also be lost. So there is a need for some informative, non-very, non-strict limits on uh, where, what part of the map the user should be allowed to look at by default. Uh, I am interested in know how, what is also missing from this. Uh, for example, if I, uh, one, of my, one of the things I want to do is do a warmer done butterfly projection. And for that kind of polyhedral projection, I need to cut down the data so there's these big splits whenever the butterfly is opening and when, when the polyhedra is being flattened. So somehow I would need to have a, the boundary for those cuts in some of the projection to be able to cut the geometries uh, accordingly. So something, some food for thought there. Uh, one, of the, also one of the things I have been worked uh, hard to get and I am extremely happy about is that you can extend the symbols and the acetates. I kid you not. Uh, the, I have a normal like marker symbol, the uh, sprite, which is an image. And this is like half the code you need to make a tinted uh, sprite, which is uh, the same thing, but whenever you're doing a uh, sprite, Whenever you are instantiating a tint sprite, you have to provide a tint color, and whenever you're rendering it, the tint color will multiply the color of the image. And I kid, the complete uh, implementation of this is like a hundred lines of code, and it is readable. People can design and implement their own symbols. It is awesome. You have to check the code for this. 
I really, really, really want to bring together people from the shader and demo scene into GIS. Whenever you talk to somebody out of the GIS about coordinates, they go crazy. Whenever you talk about GIS, to the GIS people about uh, shaders, they don't understand them. We need to bring them together. I hope I will do this at least a tiny bit. Something that I implemented in the last few weeks is uh, vector style sheets for Mapbox GL style uh, vector uh, tiles. Everybody expects it to happen. It is absolutely horrible to implement, but I have been able to provide a kind of a compact way to load uh, these base map style sheets. Also, since um, in Gleo, every symbol is a JavaScript object, I can do the leaflet thing for, for the GeoJSON loader, which is an on, on its feature. Whenever a tile is being loaded and it has been converted to symbols, I can run a callback, attach whatever kind of events I want to, or filter them, or do something to the symbols, change them before they're rendered, and I can do that for each tile, no problem. Also, all the symbols are interactive and we'll be able to uh, uh, respond to pointer events. Uh, if you have the demos, you will be able to check out this one, which is still a bit buggy, unfortunately, but it does work on uh, several of MapTiler uh, style sheets and some other vendors. But hey, MapTiler is a sponsor of Fossil G, so try this out with the MapTiler styles. It does work, I'm happy. It, I have some problems deallocating symbols, unfortunately, but it works and people expect this kind of uh, thing to happen. I don't have uh, text rendering yet because text rendering collisions is hard, especially when you're doing it with no, uh, with uh, continuous zoom levels. But it's getting there and I was really happy to implement this in a, in a few weeks. A um, couple of words about floating point. Uh, WebGL does 24-bit floating point position. We are used to handle in JavaScript 64 bits or 32 whenever you were working with uh, typed arrays. And uh, people get really confused and surprised whenever they're going to look in at some data point very far away from the original coordinates and things get kind of jaggy on the edges and uh, whenever you look very closely to it, there's like an invisible grid which is snapping all the points. And that's where this, uh, that's why this happens, because the, the point, the numbers are getting clamped into 24-bit uh, point, uh, floating point uh, number. There's two ways of handling this. One way is the map box, map deliver way, which is uh, you don't handle uh, absolute coordinates to the CRS. You only handle coordinates relative to the tile, but because I want to get away from web Mercto, I cannot depend on a specific permit, so I have to do it the other way, which is creating a, um, interim CRSs. Since I have the ability to reproject all the data, I also have the ability to offset all the data. So by offsetting the data when I'm, whenever I'm moving far away from the original coordinates, I will lower the numbers of all the coordinates in my WebGL buffers and everything will fit and no artifacts will be shown. This is completely invisible but it's a lot of hard work to get this architecture in place. Uh, a contentious point that I think, or I, th I think it will be a contentious point, is that I am licensing this with a GPL library. Why? Because I want to avoid uh, a schism like the Mapbox GL map libre. I think that GPL is, uh, was the way that should have saved us from that schism before. Uh, we are kind of scared in the JavaScript world about GPL, but I think we shouldn't be because we have JavaScript modules now. And with JavaScript modules, you just uh, publish the source code. So you don't have to compile it, so the GPL doesn't really apply to whatever you're not compiling. This should work. I want it to work, so I hope it works. Uh, some very quick more features that I don't really have time for uh, showing up. The tiles have a sliding window algorithm. I'm, I'm dumping tile data into texture so I can guarantee that uh, complex shaders will always be able to query neighboring pixels whenever I'm doing some um, uh, elevation uh, data. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the thing. Uh, uh, the slope. slope, yes. And 
that's my time. <laughs> so I do conformal rasters. I do, um, whenever I'm changing the center of the map, there's a smooth transitions because, because the platina has a instant uh, view of the map state, but the map doesn't, so the map handles the animations of the platina. The platina can work as a leaflet render. I have jaw rotation, which is the rotating the map. Uh, I do have style, uh, spreadsheet support for the sprites built in, and I have, it's very similar to the vector style sheets, I have symbolizers for the GeoJSON. So you open a GeoJSON, you apply, a, you give it a function that returns symbol, and it works. I have a lot of work to do. Most importantly, web workers. I'm, I'm doing all the work in the main uh, thread, and it sucks on performance when I'm doing vector tiles. It's not good. But that's all the time I have. Here's the code for my th little thing. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much.